Hello and welcome to Her Kind of Healthy, a brand new health podcast series brought to you by Sanford Women's. I'm your host, Courtney Collin with Sanford Health News. We want to start brand new conversations about age-old topics from fertility and postpartum depression to managing stress, healthy living, and so much more. Her Kind of Healthy is designed to bring you honest conversations about self-care, happiness, and your overall well-being with our Sanford Health experts. Today, we're talking with Megan Burgers, a certified nurse midwife, about low-intervention birth options and how Sanford Women supports expecting mothers through that natural birth process. Megan, it's so good to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. Tell us first a little bit about yourself and what brought you here to Sanford Women's. Sure. Um, Well, I'm a California native. What brought me here is the primary question is, why did you come here from California? Uh, My husband's from the area and his whole family is here. Um, And so when I got this opportunity uh, at Sanford, we, we jumped at the opportunity to come to live close to family. What about your role as a Sanford Women's nurse midwife? Do you enjoy the most? The personal interaction with each particular woman. Um, Pregnancy and birth is a very personal and vulnerable season in life. And I, and I um, love the opportunity to be allowed to come into that space. It feels very sacred. um, And I keep it in the highest regard. And that just feels like a privilege. Define low intervention when it comes to planning for a baby's arrival. Sure. So interventions are things that we do to the process um, involve instead of observe. So the majority of women who are experienced pregnancy and birth are generally going to have normal, low-risk, healthy births. And so our job as providers is to observe alongside. We check baby's heartbeat, you know, at every visit. We're doing lab work to make sure that we're catching um, any abnormalities, anemia, gestational diabetes, you know, et cetera. Um, And when it comes to birth, us as nurse midwives, we... A highly encouraged spontaneous labor. So again, we're not doing anything. And so labor, we're designed to conceive, grow babies and birth babies. Our bodies were designed to do that. So observing the process is low intervention. So when it would be appropriate to intervene would be is when we did see the normal natural process veer off to the side. Um, And that would be things that I'd mentioned already or a, a myriad of things. And we are trained as healthcare providers to notice when things veer off to the side, because ultimately we'd love to maintain the possibility of a vaginal birth, you know, versus a a, a surgical birth Um, and keep it as low risk as possible. Um, And so if there's something that does come up, we do notice it and there are things that are appropriate to do in the meantime. So talk about some of the options that Sanford Women's provides expecting moms to support that natural birth experience. Part of the big core base is is education. And so if you understand how your body works, if you understand the normal physiologic process, then there's a trust aspect of that. We do have the mom-to-be center. We have, um, which has educators. We have um childbirth classes, breastfeeding classes. We have dad classes, baby basics classes um, available to add on to what we're talking about in clinic as well. Um, And so starting off with a basic understanding is what I think is the building blocks to understanding the, the initial steps of having a low intervention birth. So if you know already that you can help your body foster a, a, a healthy, spontaneous labor, then that's step one. Um, other options would be is we have wireless monitors, you know, so that you don't have to be attached to one of the 
heart rate monitors once you're in labor. We do have whirlpool tubs um, in most of the rooms to allow for what we call hydrotherapy. Getting getting in and out out of a hot tub during labor sounds terrific. Um, we as nurse midwives also offer water birth too, and so. If a woman is interested in having to actually birth their baby underwater, we do offer that as well. And so that allows for uh, the benefits of the hydrotherapy, decreased pain, sensation, um, increased overall satisfaction with that. We also offer nitrous. So nitrous oxide is what we think of as laughing gas right at the dentist office. Um, but it is used worldwide much more so than the U S but it is catching on. Um, and it is a, a really terrific option in place as either if a woman is planning on an epidural, you know, it might be the first step. It might be the only thing that's necessary for her to be able to cope with labor at the time. So it is a less concentrated uh, amount of it. So um, it, it takes the edge off and, and many women really, really love it to be able to do that. Yeah. So women don't have to deliver lying flat on their backs. Oh, no. No. And so, you know, sometimes that is an option or a common position just related to having an epidural, not being able to leave the bed. Um, but if if the woman wants to deliver in a different position, it, it, mobility is really important to assisting in the birth process. Um now, I've even caught babies with mom standing at the side of the bed, or sometimes moms have babies, you know, in the bathroom. Um, and so it can be, yeah, it, as as long as the situation is deemed appropriate and safe and, and the provider is um, support, you know, supportive and, and comfortable with that movement, movement is awesome. So different positions, hands and knees, laying on their side, anything like that. We've got birth chairs uh, that are more uh, facilitate kind of a squatting position. Um, and so some women find that they feel more powerful in that position. Yeah. So lots of options. What are some of the most common that women tend to gravitate toward when it comes to these low intervention options? We encourage walking. So we'll see a lot of women walking in the halls, um, the tubs, the tubs are really highly used. Um, and so that's a really great option for women in, in all, in all stages of labor. But, but I would say many, many women use it kind of in the early stages of labor, get in and out, we can re, you know, reheat it and so expand on the benefits then of this type of experience for both mom and baby. And then of course that support person that might be in the room as well. Absolutely. So when we foster physiologic birth, um, it's just the normal body process. And so if there, you know, it's that old adage of if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know? Um, and so if we can be, vigilant observers of normal, then our body is designed to work that way. Um, and so women can have a, feel maybe more empowered that her body was able to do what it's designed to do, you know, with observe, close observation from us and, and feel safe. Um, labor can progress normally. Uh, babies do well you know, if it's necessary to intervene, then by all means, safety is utmost priority. Um, but yeah, having a low intervention birth just fosters, um, so many normal body processes. Yeah. Yeah. So for instance, when we allow for the brain to create the hormone called oxytocin that sends signals down to the uterus to cause contractions. What it also does in the brain is release endorphins. So these are those natural brain opiates. So if you can imagine we're having the contractions, but also the natural opiates at the same time, that is natural painkillers, right? And so if we're using a synthetic version of that oxytocin through an IV is called Pitocin. Now it is widely used in the hospital and there are very, very 
appropriate times to use Pitocin. Um, but if we use it in a situation where maybe it didn't necessarily have to be used, we're bypassing that normal opiate process. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Do all women have the opportunity for this type of care during labor? Like what would make a woman a candidate for a more holistic birth experience? So to a degree, I think every woman is an appropriate candidate for personalized, tailored experience. So all the way from normal, healthy, spontaneous, no problems, one baby, that whole, from that gamut, from that end of the spectrum, to the woman who's having a particularly high risk pregnancy. Now we're, we can talk about minimizing interventions. Do we have to use all of them? You know, not necessarily. Can that woman who's having a high risk pregnancy still have a vaginal birth? You know, we don't have to necessarily do a C-section unless it's medically necessary. And then plus also having conversations of how can we tailor this experience? You know, what are some options involved in the process? Um, how can we involve the woman and her family and their own preferences or how they'd like to see it go? I think there's always room for conversation of that. You talk about the advantage of choosing a low intervention birth in a hospital setting like Sanford versus at home. Sure. The benefits of having a hospital birth is that should things go sideways, you know, we have all of the available resources. So at Sanford, um, which makes us different in the local community is that us certified nurse midwives and the, and the OBGYN physician, there's one of each of us in the hospital 24 seven. And so for women who choose to have one of those two care providers, we are always available. And for women who choose one of us certified nurse midwives is, you know, there's the question of, okay, well, if you're not a surgeon and if I need surgery, what happens then? Uh, we work very closely with our OBGYN physician colleagues. And so it is an, it is a seamless transition to go from the midwife caring for you. We're recognizing when something goes sideways and if a C-section is urgently necessary, the OB comes right in. We're having that conversation right there. It's happening right away. We're down the hall from the OR. Um, and so we're maintaining all of those levels of, of safety. And so having that low intervention birth can feel like you're at home with the knowledge that you can have a physician if necessary for their expertise as surgeons. Um, as well as the NICU down the hall too. So if everything goes swimmingly and baby is born and then baby is needing resuscitation, we have seconds in between a highly specialized care team in the door. Are you seeing an increase? Is your team seeing an increase in requests for these low intervention options? And if so, why do you think that's the case? Yes, yes, we are. Uh, and so, for example, us midwives, we um, offer water birth, like I said before. And so uh, a couple of years ago, we actually had two of the labor and delivery rooms converted into low intervention rooms. And both of them have really beautiful built-in, in-the-room jacuzzi tubs that are designed to birth in. Um, and the room was... Uh, had was renovated it 's tiled it's it 's very beautiful um, and so it can give a woman a feeling of not being hospitalized does that make sense you 're not necessarily in the hospital um, and so we are seeing an increase in interest and desire for using these rooms asking for we also teach hypnobirthing, um, which is kind of a a way to approach birth um, and labor and think about that and how to use relaxation uh, to 
maximize their their coping during labor. And so we're seeing a, a significant increase in in those numbers um, of women who are seeking out that kind of class. Um, and the reason why I think is because women are th- now, I think, more and more understanding that they want to know more. They're learning how their bodies are working. They're, they're seeing maybe that there is a difference between you know, decades ago when it was just, you, you did what your, your doctor or your provider said, because that's what they knew. Uh, now it's like, well, well, do I, I'm hearing stories of other people having different experiences. And that actually sounds like something I like. Because the physiologic birth process can happen on its own. Right. And so to support women in this journey and provide these low intervention options, what does it mean as a nurse midwife to you to be able to do that, to be a part of something like that? It it is beautiful to see a woman feel like she's heard, like she is safe. Um, She's trusting the process, trusting her care team, and feeling empowered during that process and I don't have to do anything. You know, if I'm involved in the process where part of part of my job is what I love is educating women about their bodies. You know, knowledge is power and if you don't know how something works, you're not going to know how to ask or how to tailor this for yourself. So to observe something that can be lifelong empowering I can I, I just know that it affects the family for their entire future. You know, we've had many, many women come to us and say, Gosh, my first birth, I I know now what I what I know and I didn't know then and I want this to go different. And to hear them speak afterwards of an entirely different empowering process is is just so rewarding. And that doesn't mean to say that that first birth was, you know, spontaneous and ended in a vaginal birth and the left one didn't, didn't go sideways and have, you know, a C-section, but it, more intervention doesn't necessarily mean less powerful, less listening, less trust, less, you know, that type of thing. So I want to shift for just a moment before we wrap up to bring in COVID-19 and wondering how this pandemic has impacted the way you deliver care and the labor experience in general. What are you hearing from women? Mm -hmm. Well, what I think was the most surprising thing for women is on a hospital level, we are decreasing numbers of visitors. What we have heard time and time again is, gosh, I had no idea that it would be so peaceful and quiet to not have all the visitors. I can rest, I can breastfeed, I can just have this bonding time with my partner and my baby. And that has been, I think, the one of the, the most surprising things for families, because initially, it's like, oh, well, decreasing visitors, gosh, that sounds like a really big negative thing. I mean, you really only here for, you know, a day or two afterwards, maybe three, and then go home and have visitors as appropriate, or however you deem that to be. But Um, that is, that's been one of the most surprising things, but in terms of caring for women, it just is the same. We just all wear masks now. Um, and, and doing tests as appropriate. And so it really hasn't changed a lot besides again, less people, less visitors. It's more of an intimate environment. And I think it kind of lends itself a little bit more towards this privacy, um, feeling more comfortable kind of environment. So if women are feeling anxious about the labor and delivery experience amid this pandemic, how would you ease that fear, that worry? Yeah, well, good news is that the overall experience really isn't that different. And I think coming out of this, we're seeing a lot of... um, positive things from it, including we have implemented quickly a telehealth, 
telemedicine visits. And so where appropriate women are able to just video chat with us. I'll sit in my office a couple times a day and have a video chat, you know, a video visit with, with some women that I'm seeing for their pregnancy or whatnot. Um, that's a nice option, especially if women are coming from farther away or finding it a little more difficult to get away and into the clinic. Yes, that is. Um, and then just feeling anxious about it. We're, we're, we're safety is our utmost priority. And so how we're helping to elevate safety is, uh, not necessarily having babies sleep in the nursery. Babies are staying in the rooms. We're encouraging moms and babies to go home as soon as they're, it, it's appropriate. It's safe. And so that sometimes is a little bit shorter than typical. So maybe 24 hours instead of 48 hours. Um, and so I would say that, it, that it's not it's not very different. Honestly, it's not very different. And we are being very cautious about safety with COVID and mask wearing and staff and hand hygiene and all of that. And so some people are afraid to come to the hospital because they're afraid that maybe they might get it here or, but people at the door are screened. Our unit is closed. Yeah. We're, We're taking all the precautions necessary and it doesn't feel really that much different. Okay, so now I want to know how early can a woman start to develop this birth plan and when can she start to explore all of these options? Today. And it doesn't even have to be anything that is hard and stone or anything like that. It can just be exploring exploring options. You know, here at, at Sanford we have uh options of care providers that range from OBGYN physicians family practice physicians, certified nurse midwives. So that part process can start right away. You don't even have to think that you even might even get pregnant in the next year or two or five, but can go see your, your provider and start having these conversations. How can I start now to prepare my mind and my body to have the healthiest start to whenever that season may come? So, and preconception visits are, are always welcome. Um, and so, yeah, that conversation can start right now. So where can a woman find more information as she starts to plan and really think about these things? Yes. So definitely our website, we have, uh, most of, you know, all of this information on our website at Sanford Women's. Um, but then also we have before baby events, and so we have these periodically throughout the year. And, and what's great about this is that some, some women come with their partners who are planning to get pregnant in the near future, who are already pregnant. Um, and we have information there that range from here are the different types of prenatal care providers and here here's pediatricians and here's um, prenatal yoga teacher, all the way to finances, all the way to tours and things like that. So it's a really wonderful um, evening, a snapshot of learning more. Um, And then also just talking with your provider. And so it just make an appointment or wherever you are and, and, and see what they have to say. But I do work in the OBGYN clinic here at the main campus in Sioux Falls. Um, And, Every, everyone is welcome to make an appointment and start having these conversations. And I know they happen across across the Sanford footprint and uh, at different clinics across the city. Um, but anyone is welcome to make these appointments and start that conversation. Wonderful. I learned a lot today. <laughs> Megan Berger is a certified nurse midwife with Sanford Women's. We're grateful for your time. Thank you so much for all of your insight and information on these low intervention birth options. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Courtney Collin with Sanford Health News. Be on the lookout for our next episode of Her Kind of Healthy coming your way soon. Stay well and have a great day.